G's business is serious. Plus, it's getting harder and harder to stand out in a crowded marketplace. So what's the solution? Humour. Yeah, a good old laugh. That's what. (laughs) Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, where successful small business owners share their secrets to take your marketing to the next level. Now, here's your host, Tim Reid. Welcome back, listeners, to the home of Australia's number one small business marketing podcast and small business marketing forum. I am your host, Timbo Reid. But you, that's right, you, so much more importantly, are a motivated small business owner ready to crank out some great marketing and build that business into the empire that it deserves to be. How are you all? Well, I hope. Enjoying your marketing, I hope more. And hopefully, by listening to this show, you are going to take it to another level. I've got a funny show today. Not a bit. Well, it's a big show. It's always a big show, I hope. But it's a funny show. It's a show all about humor. I have very special guests in Troy and Zara Swindles Gross, who are in the business of injecting humor into business. That's what they do. They're really good at it. And they're going to show you how to use humor, even if you don't think you're funny, into growing your business. It's clever. It's fun. It's kind of how it all should be, you know? As I said at the start, humor humor is a way of differentiating. Anyway, I'll get into that very, very shortly. Plus, I've got a listener question on how to introduce a new product into the market from a Japanese listener, which is kind of cool. Very, very international show. Righto, let's get stuck right in. Small Business Big Marketing with Tim Reid. Smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Now, as you know, team, this show is made possible by the very good folk at Net Registry. And I want to know, how is that digital footprint of yours going? Like, what if I visited your website? What would I see? In fact, have you got a website? Would you show up if I searched for something relevant to your industry? I do hope so, if you're a long-time listener of the show. But don't worry. If you're starting to think you're an online failure, you're not alone. Many businesses get their website live and then think, ha, my work here is done. Many businesses don't have a website. 43% in Australia don't have a website. What's that about? Now, fortunately, the solution to your marketing your business online, a lot closer and cost-effective than you think. Thanks to the very good team at Net Registry, who not only make this show possible, but are superstars at getting your online marketing sorted. From domain names to best hosting solutions for your website, website design, even a Google AdWords campaign. So what are you waiting for? Hey, what are you waiting for? It's time to get your online footprint sorted. Head over to netregistry.com.au and tell them Timbo sent you. So, got a bit of a listener question happening here, and it's a ripper. It's in broken English, so I'm going to read it as it is. But it certainly makes sense. It's from Kaori Chikada. Hope I pronounced that correctly, Kaori. He or she says, Hi, Timbo. Hope you're well. I am well, thank you. I'm a little bit sore. I cramped up overnight, to tell you the truth, Kaori. I uh, I went for a big bike ride yesterday. I know, yes, I am a middle-aged man in Lycra. Uh, about to do the Great Victoria bike ride with my daughter. So I've actually had to start riding. First time in 30 years. Uh, But more on that another time. Kaori says, I am thinking to set up my own business. And that is why I discovered your great podcast recently. I love it. Three exclamation marks after love it. Eh? Eh? Always judge people's passion by the number of exclamation marks. She goes on to say, thanks for your great work. I have a question as a person who is seeking to start a new business. I came from Japan originally and finally got visa and all the rights to start whatever I want to. Oh yeah, got to love getting that visa. That frees you up hugely. Now I want to start business, which can be kind of new concept for people in Australia. Like that. I want to bring and spread a great beauty slash health product 
It is like a sauna, but with so much more comfort and much more health benefits from Japan. In Japan, that thing, huge success. And I really do believe that people in Australia will love it. Well, having belief, Kaori, is really important. You need to believe in this product before anyone else does. However, I'm having a hard time with how to do marketing. <laughs> You're not alone there. What is the good way to introduce something very new to people? Thinking about my business is very exciting and fun. At the same time, very scary. That's good if it's scary. That means it kind of you care, you know? And, you know, that hold that scary feeling, Kaori, because that will push you forward. It, it's like nervous energy. That's what I think it is. It's more. It's not scared. Scared's when a ghost jumps out from behind the cupboard when you're getting dressed. But um, nervous energy is when you, you're excited. That's a better word. Uh, you're, ghosts. Ghosts. It's, like, it's no ghosts. No such thing as ghosts. Your show has been encouraging me lots. I'm sure there are lots of listeners like that. Hope so. I would appreciate so much if you can share your ideas. Thank you, Timbo. Right, okay, Ori. So what I do... Here's five things I do if I were you. Now, I don't know what your budget is, okay? So I'm going to sh assume it's modest and you don't have lots of spondoolie, lots of yen, lots of Australian denaris to, um, to spend on your marketing up front. So I'm going to try and give you some ideas that will allow you to do, to make an impact um, relatively, uh, not so much quickly, but effectively. Number one, and you've kind of done this, but decide on your positioning. I talk a lot about getting your message right first before you worry about where to put it. So decide on your positioning. Is, it, is, is this product about relaxing? Is it therapeutic? Is it about sports recovery? You talk about um, beauty and health product, but be clear on what the positioning of this sauna is is in people's minds. Once you're clear on that, then go and develop your key messages for your best mates. So you've got to do the work on the brand. Your best mates, that group of people that are going to have the highest propensity to buy it, who are going to love it, and develop your key messages around them. What are those two, three, four things that when they ask about it, you are going to hit them between the eyes with, okay? The really compelling stuff. It's the hard work, but it's the important work, this stuff. Once you've got your positioning and your brand work right, and go into the Small Business Big Marketing Forum, Kaori, because there is an entire section in the classroom on helping you get clear on your brand character. Once you've done that, go and set up a basic website. Go to Net Registry and set up your website because you are going to start, my, my final ideas are going to be about directing traffic to you and in the first instance to your website. I don't think it's a complicated website. I think it's a, I've got a home page, an about page, and very, very clear contact details. But I do think the website should have words, pictures, and video. Give people as much information as you can in order for them to go, ho oh, ho, loving that sauna. Number four, then once you've got the website, you can adapt that into a brochure and a slide deck presentation for when you go and meet with the idea that I'm going to give you in point five. But in order to get your brochure and your presentation sorted out, um, go to 99designs and do it. Just get some beautifully designed marketing materials done because you want to be proud of what you're about to present to your joint venture partners, which is my point number five. Go and seek out joint venture partners, people who share similar audiences to those that you want to get in front of. Okay, so it could be builders, it could be health practitioners, um, it could be beauty consultants. I don't know, whatever your positioning of your sauna is going to be, go and find others that can get you in front of their customer base, their audience. Uh, you might be podcasters, it might be bloggers, it might be magazine editors, or it could be other businesses. But that gives you leverage. That instead of you going one-to-one, -one, that allows you to go one-to-many. 
So Kaori, there's five ideas, my friend. I do hope it works for you. I love it when I hear about a new product. Feel free to send me one. <laughs> I'll try it out and uh, certainly give it a review on the show. Hey, haven't been seeded with, oh, there's another idea, by the way, seed it with key people who will talk about it. P.O. Box 989, Mount Eliza, 3930. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think you can post a sauna, can you? Hey, that's enough. Thanks for the question, Kaori. And listeners, if you want your marketing questions answered tomorrow, go over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com, hit the forum button and join. Become a member. Join the marketing discussion because that's where motivated small business owners hang out. If you want your marketing question answered at some point in the coming months, send me an email. Questions at Marketing. Dot com. Now, I mentioned 99 Designs in that answer to the previous listener question. Now, if you need something designed, doesn't matter what it is, you've got to check out 99 Designs. This is how it works. You tell them what you need. You fill out a simple design brief and they walk you through all the questions and you choose how much you'll pay, right? Anywhere between $299 and $1,199, okay? Okay. That, that is basically the amount of money you pay to post your brief on 99designs. And it includes an amount of prize money. Most of it is prize money. You then submit your brief and you get dozens of designs, and dozens of designers submitting ideas to your design contest from around the world, mind you, and you give them feedback. And that happens across a seven-day period. Then on that last day, on the seventh day, competition finishes, you pick your favorite design, they send you the high-res files, you release the prize money, and that's it. And the wonderful thing is, you get designers from everywhere looking at your design brief through different eyes, so you get lots and lots of different concepts. You'll, you'll be amazed. It is just such an incredible way of getting your marketing materials designed. So head over to 99designs.com forward slash SBBM, because that way you will get a $99 upgrade to your listing, a turbo upgrade, and it will get you on average 185% more designs being submitted. You got to love that. That's an exclusive offer just for you, the small business big marketing listener. Head over to 99designs.com forward slash SBBM. Small Business Big Marketing with Tim Reid. Okay, let's get stuck in to today's guests. Yes, plural guests. Troy and Zara from Humor Australia. You're going to love this, guys. This is an interview in which you will discover how to use humor to grow your business. Hey, who would have thought... Hey, that telling the odd joke, putting the odd smile on the dial of your prospects could possibly grow your business. Well, seriously, yeah, seriously, it will. It does. There's not enough there's not enough laughter in this world as far as I'm concerned. Everything's getting pretty serious. There's bad news after bad news. Everyone thinks that, you know, serious, well, not everyone, but too many business owners are way too serious in the way they go about things, and there is room for humor every time. Now, Troy and Zara, they're my speaking coaches. They've helped me with my public speaking these last however many months. Um, I got introduced them to them through Brad Smith, past guest of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. How's this? Troy and Zara have performed collectively to an audience of six million plus including 10,000 live radio and TV appearances. They so know what they're talking about. So uh, I really enjoyed this, uh, bringing this uh, interview to you because there is marketing gold, G-O-L-D, in it. There's also a language warning in it, okay? Uh, the F-bomb is dropped, nah, not once, twice, okay? Just go with it. If the kids are in the car, get them out of the car now. Quickly, quickly. It's it. There's, yeah, there's a language warning, but that's cool. It's kind of within the context of what we're talking about. Enough from me. Let's welcome Troy and Zara from Humor Australia to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. <laughs> Troy and Zara from Humor Australia, welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Hooray! 
G'day, Timbo. <laughs> Lovely to have you guys on board. Already got a smile on my dial. Now, <laughs> let me start with the quote from the top of your website. You're both, looking, you're both looking at each other going, oh, my God, what have we got there? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I totally agree with what you say. There is an epidemic of over-seriousness happening in the workplace and it leads to sickness, absenteeism, less creativity, poor customer service, reduced <laughs> profit and a high degree of party pooperism. The big question is, what's party pooperism? No, it's yes. not. What's going it's on in the workplace? Very scientific term, obviously, Timbo. Very scientific. Correct. Correct. <laughs> what's going on in the workplace? Yeah, you know what? I stand by everything we have said on uh, the top of our website there. Lucky There's- that. There's a big problem going on out there, Tim, and I think it's that we've really lost our way. We think that capability and seriousness are connected, that they're related in some way, and they couldn't be further apart. Obviously, we need to be capable in work and life. We don't always have to be serious. And in fact, being overly serious, and we do it all the time, and we spend you know, almost every day in someone's fabulous boardroom in some part of Australia talking to them about their conferencing or their businesses or their, you know, their, the programs they'd like to run. And the amount of times that people come straight into a conversation with the agenda, with what they mm-hmm. want to get ticked off, because time is money, but don't take the time for the niceties. Don't take the time to actually build rapport. So do you, do you just stop at that point and go, oh, hang on, team, uh, got a quick gag for you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, weirdly, it's not about jokes. Right. It's about a mindset. It's about an attitude right. that you walk in with. It's it's really not about jokes. And I, I need you to hear this particularly, Tim. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Taking that one offline? You, you know what it's really about? It's yeah. about being good company with someone. And we always say, you know, if you, if you want a, a, a good company, be good company, be someone that people would like to spend time with. And, you know, as I say, people jump into the business stuff and they don't really care about building the relationships as much. And I think small business people do this much better than the big Mm -hmm. corporations because they understand how important it is. We've got little tools that we use to kind of deflect or diffuse that kind of energy. Um, They're not necessarily ones that we ever share, but I'll share one (laughs) with you now. Um, you know, it's one that we use all the time and it's just called the one, two, three thing in me, which is we always do two unrelated conversations before we get to the business conversation. So, you know, you walk into work and as opposed to saying, hey, can you get me that file? Mm-hmm. You say, hey, did you check out the game on Sunday night? How amazing was that? And am I looking at something different on you? Is there a different haircut, different colour? You know, by the way, um, the kitchen's on fire and can you get me that file? <laughs> so, so, Okay. Oh, to that point, because uh, you came back to me on an email yesterday and said something <laughs> to the effect of, gee, um, you, you, what, what did you say? You, you're not big on the small talk because I like it. It was an email to you suggesting or asking you for something. And it was like, whereas to me, what you're just suggesting, Zara, I like, I get, but it also feels like small talk and it's not, or it's not necessarily authentic because do you really care about what they thought about the game? Yeah, I do, I do. And I think that you need to connect on someone else's level. You need to see where they're at as opposed to just what you did yesterday, Tim, you know, bark orders at someone. Jeez, um, you are. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Troy? You good there, mate? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine, thanks, Tim. How are you? I guess I guess what she's saying is that we kind of relate humour to humanity. <laughs> so it's about um, sometimes that little that little bit extra that you put in will often return to you because if you build those relationships, often then you get people helping you out or they go, you know what, I, I'm a bit of an expert at that, so let me take over that. Like, for instance, I've got a bit of graphic design query bumping around at the moment um, for someone on a project. I, I'm no, no graphic designer. I know a little bit about it, um, but it came down to a technical question and I've got a mate that I've known for 20 years years great relationship there he's working on something else right now but i can email him in another state and go mate can you just fix this for me and he'll go done so it's probably really about cultivating those relationships in a good way so that you scratch my back i scratch yours but so, he doesn't so, hang on, he, he doesn't just go hey mate can you help me with this either he goes hey how's the kids yeah, what are yeah. you working on at the moment by the way i'm in trouble <laughs> can <laughs> so, you help me here's the thing with my email yesterday and i, I didn't realize i was gonna this is almost like a counseling session now for me um <laughs> 
Um, so <laughs> listeners, go and you know do the dishes or whatever you need to do. But like, I, I don't feel like I need to re- build rapport. And I'm guessing as, as listeners, hopefully there's a couple on my side going, you know, I didn't feel I needed to build rapport every time I send someone an email, particularly you guys who I have regular conversations with. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, think about it like this. You know, you walk into a, a party or you walk into someone else's house you know, you're not going to walk straight and say, you know, where's the fridge? Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, the fridge is in, that's, <laughs> what's important. I've got some cold beer I need to keep cold. <laughs> or what's on the telly, move move aside, I'm going right. to sit in your seat. You're going to say, g'day, mate, hey, you're looking good today. How's your day? And then you're going to get to the real conversations. But I think actually small talk leads to big conversations. We were in a meeting yesterday and, you know, this guy really pushed my buttons because we were doing them a favour. We'd already delivered an exceptional result for this particular business very, very recently. He wasn't in this particular, you know, environment originally, so he was new to it. But he just was so rude. You know, he was just so, well, what do you do and how's it work? And I felt like going, well, mate, (laughs) you know, talk to your team. Um, and then get back to us when you want to act like a human being. But, but part of me goes, so that bloke, because that was yeah. me clearly yesterday, I was on his side, and he's obviously having a bad day. Um, he's you, got pressures. You, you yeah. could have used your your skill of yep. humour by yep. lightening him up as opposed yes. to, because it sounds like you might have taken that personally. Well, mate, that's a really good point. So what happened was you know, all of that's firing me, it, it, firing in me at that moment. I'm going, are you right? Who the hell do you think you are? Yeah, yeah. What's actually coming out of my mouth though? What's, what's you know, oozing from my <laughs> demeanour yeah. is I really want to get this guy on side. I want everyone in this room to be laughing by the time we leave. Yep. I want him to believe that he's in safe hands and that this is going to be an exceptional experience, not just for his team, but for him as well. And that's exactly what happened. So you've got to actually so, Okay, harness. so what did you do? What was your what was your top little bit of secret sauce there, Zah? I did a little bit of distraction. So I did a, a little bit of diffusing the situation to be able to sort of um, calm him down. Mm-hmm. I definitely used humour, but I used some of our, our good humour is good business information to broadly, like to share it with the room, but really I was talking directly to him. Mm-hmm. You know, I was talking about the fact that, that you know, there's a real lack of playfulness in the way that we deal with each other these days. And play is really important because when we play, we gain access to our subconscious mind, which has an incredible capacity for creativity. Now, he wants his team to be creative, Mm -hmm. He wants them to be innovative. Um, But in many ways, we have to give people permission to be able to lighten up, Mm -hmm. you know, because we think that seriousness equals capability. Seriousness means I'm getting the job done. But in fact, what this guy did yesterday was he made the entire room awkward. Mm. What we did was we just let the fuse uh, off a little bit. We just let the lid off the pot, yep. um, let them know, you know what, it's going to be a lot of fun and you're going to enjoy it. And by the end of it, he said, so, you know, w- will I get a run sheet of exactly what's going to happen? And we went, no. Nope. <laughs> and he went, sounds awesome, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. See, I, I think she's uh, she's a lot better at that sort of stuff than me, Timbo. Mm. I, I think I'm uh, probably close to you in that I go, oh, well, if you don't want it, I've got other places to be. I can go downstairs <laughs> having lunch right now. I'm helping you out. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, to be, to be fair, he was one of those marketing wankers and you've got to watch them. <laughs> well, uh, careful, careful. <laughs> hey, now, let's. I need to understand this more. Humour isn't... Um, being funny, no. being funny is a, is an element of humour, and you yes. talked about the fact that you, it, if you want a good company, you need to be good company. So this is this more about, and I've had a few re- guests recently talk about this coming from the heart. Sometimes that means being funny. Sometimes it means being compassionate, empathetic. Yep, yep. it's exactly. It's from the heart. You know, good speaking is speaking from the heart to the heart, but it's seeing where the other person is at and adjusting your style to suit. And I think it's being authentic too. You know, you, you can't, you're quite right, Tim, in that you can't be who you're not. So what you, what, we're, what we try and do in, in the work that we do in corporate is try and educate people to use their own strengths in a more human, more engaging way that hopefully will bring better results for them personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. But it, it should also come from truth. You know, we define humour really simply as keeping a lighthearted frame of mind regardless of the circumstances. Mm-hmm. So it's really easy to remain lighthearted and upbeat when things are going well. It's more challenging 
you know, when it all hits the fan and mm. you're under time pressures or you're dealing with difficult people, yeah, mm -hmm. and we're all going to have to deal with them all the time. So it's putting some space between you and your reaction. Exactly what you're saying about yesterday's conversation with this gentleman. Um, you know, if I can contain my own critical factors, if I can calm myself down and say, you know what, this guy's just under pressure, he's concerned, he needs to be put at ease and I don't take the, the tack of of, wow, he's just a really rude man, mm. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to work with him, I can reach a place where we can actually have a laugh and that's what happened yesterday. So mm. it's keeping a lighthearted frame of mind regardless of the circumstances, but it's also, you know, you can turn some pretty serious uh, conversations into some pretty high comedy sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think you Have can. you got an you example know, of that? We do a lot of, you know, speeches and keynoting for, for corporate and I share a lot of really personal stories and um, I'm just trying to think of something that's true where, where laughter kind of emerged from the truth. And I can probably the first one that pops into my head is when my dad died. Now, you wouldn't think that that's particularly hilarious <laughs> you know, and, no. and it wasn't. No. I was devastated. You know, I was, I, I'd never really had a good relationship with dad anyway. I rang him every week of my life because he wasn't part of my life. And, you know, I'd always say to him at the end of the phone call, I love you, dad. You know, and he'd say, yep, yep, all right, you know, and hang up. And, yep. and every week I'd ring back and go, I love you, dad. And he'd go, yep, yep, all right, blah, blah. Week before he died, I rang him up and I said, I love you, dad. And I went to hang up and he said, I love you too. And I almost missed it and I got the phone back to my ear and I said, oh, what did you say? And he went, yep, yep, all right, bye-bye. Yep, yep, right. <laughs> but when my sister called to say that he died, you know, I found myself on my knees, as you do when you find out that somebody has gone, that for some reason you need to be on the floor. Did you drop I, to your knees? Really? I, like I, that's I kind of movie stuff. It, well, it's smooth. I don't know if you've lost anyone close, have you? Uh, I have lost my dad. Okay, so I just found that the floor was the safest place to be. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I was just sitting on the carpet in my lounge room having this conversation with my sister. and But one of the first things out of my mouth was a bit of light-hearted humour. Now, it was just between her and I. Mm. Now it's between everyone, but mm. it's, it's it was just between <laughs> her and I. And at the time, um, you know, we'd been helping Dad out a little bit financially and um, my first response was, oh, well, at least we'll save some cash. Now there was that awkward pause. There was that yeah, absolute yeah, yeah, yeah. awkward silence. Yeah. And then we both went, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's happening there, you know, and we use this phrase a lot, if you can joke, you can cope. So it didn't take the seriousness out of the situation. It just meant for a split second my instinct was to use humour as something to hold on to. And, and Zah, A, thank you for sharing that very personal story, and B, you know, I I personally use humour to, for me, it's like that, that was your way out and I find I use humour in the same way. Sometimes I feel like I've crossed the line and, <laughs> and, and did, like you could have felt maybe you've crossed, yep. you crossed the line because yep. you've just told a funny story about your dad's passing. Yeah. And that line annoys me because it's like it, it, it happened recently where I was like, I thought we did something really funny. I won't go into the details, but it was like the other person just didn't find it funny. And it's <laughs> like, and I've looked at it and gone, well, it's not offensive. They can't have found it, found it offensive. And I've sort of gone through the different aspects of why didn't they find it funny? And I've just arrived at the fact that they're just, they've got stuff going on. Well, and, and I wasn't, yep. it wasn't time to laugh at me or anyone else. Sure, sure. So, so you know, you can't please all the people all the time. In a, a comedy audience, you know, we teach stand up stand-up comedy in any comedy audience you will have even if you're having a great night 95 percent of the room will love you mm. and there'll be a couple of people there that are completely indifferent and a couple of people that just hate you and don't they have some power <laughs> and don't they have some power and so why are we so focused on the very small percentage of people yeah. um that that don't like us they tend to be the ones that we deliver everything to yeah, so i think yeah. a few things you know learn to fail or you will fail to learn and you, you can't win all the time. It's with humour and comedy, it's a risk. Mm. You know, you're stepping out of your comfort zone. Secondly, if it goes wrong, it, sometimes you can own it. You can say, you know, yeah. that, that all went a bit wrong and um, <laughs> I think it's probably time we got back on track or, oh, um, anyone else feeling the uh, awkwardness in the air at that <laughs> yeah. point? And, and sometimes we can go, if we are out of line, we go, you know what, I, I totally understand why you would get upset by that. That was inappropriate of me. I thought that we were having a joke together. 
and I just didn't read the situation. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that's really um, worst case scenario. You know, mm. what, what I love about humour uh, is that it's really tied into the Australian identity. Mm. You know, if you look at, if you look back through history, you look at description of the Anzacs, the forming of the Anzacs and, and that whole identification of a national spirit that applies to us and also to New Zealand, humour is a big part of that. It's always what's talked about. Um, and that was in the face of some pretty serious stuff. You know, mm. a lot of young men went and, and didn't come back in that war. And uh, we were renowned for bringing, A, capability to the battlefield. We were good at what we did. But also a sense of humour, a sense of lightness, even in the face of, you know, probably the worst thing you're ever going to yes. face, which is your own mortality. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. We did bring that. We're good at that. By the way, I have listeners in Kazakhstan and Madagascar, so they have no idea what you're talking about. But <laughs> we'll move on to that. We'll, they can Google it. Hey? Do you really? Do you I, really I do. Too? I got an email two weeks ago from a bloke. I, I knew I had a listener in, in Kazakhstan, but a bloke from Madagascar emailed me and said, you know, I thought it was Prince Julian, but it wasn't. It was just... Um, <laughs> Just a business owner. So business owners are listening, guys, and I re- and business is serious, you know, but uh, I really want them to walk away from this going, okay, how do I inject humour, lightness, the odd gag into parts of my business that I would never have thought of? Now, I was thinking about this beforehand, guys. I was like, what what, what parts of the business? And and it could be, I mean, not only did you pull me up on an email yesterday, about two months ago, you pulled me up on my voicemail. And it's like, so, you know, you, you guys are seeing opportunities every step of the way to add lightness or a laugh, yep. a smile on the dial. So we're talking yep. voicemail, we're talking your logo, your website, the way you present at a meeting, a sales letter. You know, like, is is it... It, it, obviously, not every aspect of your business has to be has to have a gag. But how do we do it? Which aspects of the business are we talking about? Yeah, you know, I think as many of them as we can as we can possibly focus wow. on. I, th- I think it comes down to intention. I think I think seriousness has a time and a place. But really, if you make a decision today, and humour is a decision, to go, you know what, life is short, and truthfully, we know this instinctively, don't we? We know that all we're really doing with business is filling in time, uh, evolving as human beings and inviting some expansion into our lives. Yeah, that's that's what business is. We're trying to grow. We're trying Mm -hmm. to make ourselves better, bigger, explore more. That's what it's about. That's a really positive thing. But because of time pressures, because of money pressures, we forget what we're in the game for and it is a game. So bringing that playfulness, as you said, our voicemail has humour on it. You know, mm-hmm. our sign off and our email, I think, has directors of Humour Australia and inventors of the unicorn. You know, it, it's it's stupid stuff, mm. but it's stuff that the amount of people that leave messages on my phone and go, oh, I love that message. Yeah, Jeez, yeah. that makes me giggle. Um, you can find opportunities for it absolutely everywhere. You know, when you go to the shops and the, the shop assistant says, what would you like? You say... Well, you know, I'd like um, my own island in the Bahamas and these Tic Tacs, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, for now, I'll just have the Tic Tacs. That's my little gag. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Oh, what are you go. after? Oh, a week in the tropics? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, great. So you, so you give them the opposite of what they're expecting and it's that opposite, it's that surprise element that actually brings some humour to your life. But really there, there's four steps that we use and GSOH stands for good sense of humour. Um, we think of it, the G is good company. You know, as I said, be good company with people. And when you do that, you don't walk in with your own baggage. You know, you, you kind of lighten up. Hey, what's going on with you, mate? And what's new? And that tends to spark a little bit of, um, of that rapport we were talking about. Also get interested in people. Mm-hmm. You know, you were saying there's no time and, and we're busy, so let's just cut no, to the chase. Well, just to – because I just want to finish – I don't feel my counselling session's finished. But what <laughs> I was saying is I felt as though I had rapport and didn't need to do small talk in our emails every time. If it was someone who I hadn't emailed in a long time or called in a long time, then, you know, let's talk about the weather. But Well, yeah. well, on that, on that, two things. Um, we do have that kind of relationship, which is why I can say something back to you and call you on it. <laughs> Lucky so we we're not recording do- this. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, you know, there's also 200 other people who are also asking for things, you know, across your day. Yeah, so sometimes right. the way you ask, you know, it's not just what you do, it's how, 
It's how you do it yeah. that gets the result. There was this great study in the um, States at a restaurant chain uh, a few years back with this waiter and a, a bunch of different control groups. And with the first group, the waiter brought the bill tray over with one mint on it and the tip went up by 3% consistently. With the second group, he put two mints on the tray and it went up by 14%. With the third group, he put one mint on the tray, went to leave, and then like it was an afterthought, came back and went, have another mint. Uh, the tip went up consistently by 33%. Nice. Yeah? It's not what you do. It's how you do it. So get yeah. interested. Be good company. Keep your sense of perspective. Um, have fun. You know, that's something. Hang on. We're, going, we're, going, we're back to GSOH. So okay, G I, was good company. Good S, company. sense of perspective. Look at you following along at yeah, home. Yeah, brilliant. yeah, it's me. It's my own attentiveness. <laughs> That's great. I, I missed the O then anyway. So it's good company and get interested. S is sense of perspective, yeah? So Viktor Frankl, a uh, Holocaust survivor psychologist, was famous for saying between stimulus and response there's a space, you know, and in that space is our ability to choose, meaning between something happening and our reaction or our overreaction, there's always time to rethink it. Yeah, yes, there's... yes, but I think the problem with that is we've become conditioned because of these time pressures, these money pressures, all this stuff that we do day to day, especially running a small business, mm -hmm. that uh, we've been taught that that break doesn't exist anymore. I think it's become nothing or even a negative. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what you need to do is practice identifying that little moment between your stimulus, between something happening and your reaction to it and expanding that gap, using that time a little better and a little more wisely. The, the amount of times that we, um, you know, and we all want to respond immediately. Let's just get it done. Yep, mm -hmm. they've, they've asked something, let's just respond. But the amount of times that we as a, as a unit in our business write emails and put them in drafts and come back to them 12 hours later, mm -hmm. you know, or even that afternoon, particularly if they're prickly ones, yeah, and yeah. the amount of times we change what we've written and soften things off and, and, you know, that space is something that's available to all of us. There's a tool we use too and we often share it with people, which is just the life scale. So one is everything's great, ten is death. It's usually, yeah. it's yeah. usually the other way, but it's <laughs> one's great, ten's death. So let's say you're in the car, you're on the way to, you know, a multi-million dollar meeting. Someone has said, do not be late. This guy will not stick around. You're ten minutes late. The traffic's stuck. You're freaking out. You know, where is that normally for you? On that scale, what does that feel like as a number? Mm. Yeah, it can feel like a nine or a yeah, ten yeah, sometimes. Yeah, 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 big, yeah. yeah. It would feel big. It would feel big. But relative to death, yeah, two. Yeah. So how do you put the space in? How do you change it? How do you get from a ten to a two? It's uh, generally conscious thought. You know, yeah. you've got to actually do the work. And people think being good human is actually easy. It's it's work. It's yep. constant consciousness to be able to do it. But if I'm in a car, I'm freaking out. It's it's I'm at a nine. I can say, all right, I'm at a nine. So I, I've got to acknowledge where I am right now. I'm at a nine. I'm out of my mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not thinking straight. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be safe on the roads, and this is bad for my health and bad for the world. So I'm at a nine. How do I get to a seven? Okay, well Go to I the just. Pub. Yeah, I'm stuck in the traffic, but maybe that could help. That's one thing. <laughs> just, um, just get out of the car and walk away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like like Michael Douglas in that what film was falling that? Down. Falling down. Falling down. I, I, I don't think that ended well, though. Uh, no, no, no. no. Um, yeah, so how do I get to a seven? I just kind of think to myself. I, I, I logic myself out of my drama by saying, you know what, everyone's late once in a while. Maybe they're late. Maybe it's an opportunity to actually share the entire disastrous story get them on my side. Now mm -hmm. I'm at a seven. Okay, I've just put a little bit of distance mm -hmm. between me and the big number. Yep. If I'm at a seven, I can get myself down to a five. If I'm at a five, I can get myself down to a three. And actually, I can do that in about a minute and a half. Yep. Yep. And yep. then you... my big one there would yep. be, because um, I am a bit of a fatalist and it's like, yeah, it was meant to be. I, I don't do it that easily, but that would be me getting, you know, I'd get to the two by the time I say to myself, you know what? I don't think I'm meant to be getting this job, or if, yeah. if, if I, I'll go, I'll go through it and I'll get there. But if I'm late, I'm late, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. that's a skill, mate. That's that's a real talent because. I, I think you've really hit on it too, Zara, in that it does take practice. Um, you know, developing good mental habits like anything else, just like exercise, requires a little bit of trial and error. Mm. And and don't be afraid to fail and fail quick and move on, you know. And, and when you talk about life scale, you know, bringing yourself down from an eight or a nine to a two, you're not going to do that in one jump. With mm. practice, you'll be able to go from an eight to a seven. Mm -hmm. And then, then maybe a seven to a six. And then maybe you'll be able to go eight to five, you know, but it does take trying and retrying these techniques in order for them to click and really understand and, and feel them in your bones. I did something funny yesterday. You know, Can I share it with you? 
Yeah. We'd love you to. I I think it's to do with sense of perspective, but I want to share it anyway. So after I flicked you that really abrupt email, (laughs) (laughs) either before or after I did something funny, and I thought what I've been making a habit of is ringing past clients that I've done keynotes for in the last 12 months. And I rang one yesterday, and uh, very serious insect is this person, very serious. We'll always cut to the chase. Doesn't can't find the humour because her job is the busiest job in the world. Yeah. So I left and I knew she wouldn't answer the phone. So I hadn't spoken to her for about nine months. And yeah. at, on, the, on her voicemail, she, her message went beep. And then I started to sing, you don't send me flowers <laughs> anymore. Awesome. And then said, hey, haven't heard from you for ages and just touching base and hope all is well. So Perfect. that was kind of my sense of perspective because I knew where she'd be at because she's always flat out. I love it. But, you know, that's the, it's a circuit breaker right there. Ah. It's, yeah, that's a circuit breaker because she's, she's not expecting it. So it's something that it's very difficult to actually be critical in that moment because yeah. she doesn't know who's singing to her. She hasn't, she hasn't called me. She hasn't called me back. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's great about that too is uh, it was good for you, Tim. Yeah, I, think, yeah, yeah. I, I think that yeah. humor. You know, we're so focused on making things right for the other person so often. I think you're really good at this. You you do have a playfulness towards life, and I think that the happier we can make ourselves, the more pleasant we are to be around. Anyway, you know, mm. people want to do business with people they like. Hmm. People want to do business with people who make them feel good. And that's why it's worth investing some some time to do it. And I was going to say on that email, you know, you made me laugh as a response to that, because not only did you acknowledge it and own it, Hmm. you know, the next email, because you said, you know, I don't want to talk about the weather. You gave me a full page rundown on the weather. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And and I you made me laugh out loud. Like, I absolutely loved it because you... um, you got it, <laughs> and, and then you didn't respond to that, and I'm and and then my initial thought is like, oh, geez, have I crossed the line? Does she now think I'm overplaying the gag? <laughs> no. It was like, oh, you no. know, so I think I wasn't, won that. Wasn't wasn't the head up to to that email cloudy with a chance of? <laughs> It was a swear word. Of meatballs. <laughs> Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I responded. I just didn't respond to the weather because I thought we'd, we'd, that little component of our day was maybe done. And then and then I'm going like, oh, man, is this now a lifetime gag where every time I speak to Zara <laughs> no. or Troy, I've got to speak about the freaking weather. Well, do you know, with comedy and humour too, sometimes knowing when to get out is, is a really good yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, we, we've had our We've had our moment. We don't have to drag this on. I mean, that's what comedy is. Mm. You can love a comedian, um, but if a comedian dribbles on for one or two sentences after the tag of the joke, after the punchline, we don't laugh as hard. Mm. You know, so so it tends to be good comedians, and Seinfeld is an absolute genius at this, is economy. You know, being able to, and, and that's why yeah. you can't use time as an excuse not to build rapport with people because you can actually do it in Split second. 15 seconds, mm. yeah, or, or five seconds, mm. and then get back to the business in hand. Mm. Yeah. So, good company, get interested, sense of perspective, put some space mm-hmm. between oh. you and the drama. Oh, I used to stand for optimism, but we've actually updated it to being an optimalist. Mm. Mm. That's a new word. Mm. It it's is a new, new word. It's a new word. Yeah, it comes out of the School of Positive Psychology and I guess everyone probably knows what the difference between an optimist and a pessimist. I can sum it up for you like this, Tim. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, Professor Troy. Well, there was, a, there was a family and they had twin boys and they were concerned that one was growing up as an optimist and one was growing up as a pessimist. So they took them along to see a child psychologist, which frankly was useless because the psychologist was only three. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's not the joke. Uh, anyway, they it's took good, these though. boys along and they said, look, we're concerned one is an optimist, one is a pessimist. And the doctor said, very interesting. Well, allow me. And he basically took the boy who was a pessimist down the hall into another room that was filled with brand new shiny toys. And the boy looked around the room and then started crying. The doctor thought, this is interesting. And he said, what's the matter, son? And the boy said, there's all these beautiful toys, but if I play with them, I might break them. (laughs) The psychologist thought, okay, okay, that's fair enough. Come back with me. Come on, we'll go back and see mum and dad. He took him back to the waiting room. And then he took the boy that they thought was growing up as an optimist down the hallway again, this time into another room, and this room was piled high with horse manure. And the kid ran straight to the top of the pile and started digging. The psychologist thought, wow, this is really interesting. He said, what are you doing up there, son? 
And the kid said, well, if all this horse poo in here, there's got to be a pony somewhere. <laughs> uh, you funny guy. <laughs> it's a good example. So, so that's, uh, that is the difference between an, an optimist and a, an a pessimist. What yep. is an optimalist? Okay, so there's also a difference, according to Tal Ben-Shahar, who's a lecturer at Harvard University, between a perfectionist. Ooh, I know, you're I know. rolling out the big ones I now. I, I know stuff, mate. Yeah. I've read things. Yeah. Um, so he says there's a difference between between a perfectionist and an optimalist. Now, perfectionism is good. We all want to do great. Yeah, we all want to um, do our jobs as well as we possibly can. But there's a real problem with perfectionism is that... No humour in perfectionism? Not a lot, mate. Not a lot of time for, for humour or for detours. Um, perfectionists tend to be one note. Um, they, need, they tend to be risk averse. You know, because they've got a plan. I'm at A, I'm going to B. I've got my little business plan. I'm going to get there. Nothing's going to get in my way. Um, an optimalist knows, in fact, that that's not the way life works. So if you imagined a perfectionist journey as being a straight line, which it never is, mm -hmm. an optimalist journey is really a big squiggly line. You know, it swirls and, and we know we're starting at A, we know we're going to B, but it's not a straight line and we take detours. I call it the scenic route sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and we get thrown off course and rather than going, oh, I'm, I've been thrown off course, damn, I had a plan and now it's been ruined. You go, oh, I've been thrown off course. I wonder if this is going to open up some new opportunities. Mm. Or maybe I'll meet someone now that everything's gone a little wrong who's actually going to unlock some potential that I couldn't see when I was stuck to my rigid plan. Yep. You know, you still get there in the end, but you, you really kind of allow for the process to, of life to, to not be a linear one, to be a, a you know, a, more of a roller coaster. I've noticed that just in, a, in the simple project that I'm working on this week, which is preparing to MC this two-day job. Um, and the, the perfectionist in me saw that job as like, I need to get to, at the end, I need to have a set of scripts that are mm. going to allow me to introduce people and keep everyone feel, make everyone feel welcome, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Mm. Um, and I thought I'd just sit down and write those scripts. But man, I have been going left, right, up and down. I'd be going down rabbit holes that took me to all sorts of places online and offline. But then I get back and I, you know, it's, I keep reminding myself that I've just got to come back and I've just got to write that little introduction and that one and, you know, I'm nearly there. And, and, and then you simplify it too, you know, because yeah. you give yourself give some, some space and then you kind of go, oh, maybe I don't need all of that. Maybe it just needs a very simple kind of link or segue to get this person up. And, you know, we're doing one on Friday. I think you're coming along to it. I am, TEDx. It's got, yeah, yeah, it's got 800 people in the audience. You know, we, we're yet to receive any of the intros or bios. <laughs> They're still changing the order, you know. So, so... Sometimes, because where I I can be a little bit of a perfectionist, you know yeah. that's one of my flaws. Um, I like to know what I'm doing and how it's going to go, and I like to know, you know, what jokes I am doing. But sometimes you also need to go. You know what? I've been doing this for 25 years, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you can do a, a little bit of preparation and then allow some space for a bit of magic to arrive as well. Yeah. You know, I've done gigs where we've literally shown up and gone. Let's just be good hosts to this audience and they can sometimes be, you know, more wonderful. Well, I, I think I, I shared the story a few weeks ago where I had one of my biggest keynotes of the year, an audience of 500 real estate agents and the technology with 30 seconds to go was not going to work. So I had no slide deck and ended up having to do a Q&A and &A and I was just, you know, as you talk about being in the pocket, you know, there's a yep. jazz term and I just yep. thought I've just got to find that space, find some yep. humour be light about it because the other option was that I have a meltdown alongside everyone else that, yeah, was, that's that right. was the organiser, the tech people, the VA guy, you know, everyone was having a meltdown. I go, well, I could either hop in their car and we'll crash. Yeah, that's right. Or, that's right. or, or, or as you say, lily pad the fuck out of it. And um... <laughs> now, is that going to make sense to anybody else? Uh, uh, when, when I when I beep the uh, the f word, it will. It won't. But uh, <laughs> it uh... means it means really just do a, a light touch. Just just hop, yeah. skip, and a jump. Just get over the drama. Um, and find the place where you can be in the pocket. And you're quite right that in the pocket is that it's that. Just, you know, you're clicking your fingers, you're comfortable, your heart rate is calm, you're going, you know what, I'm here for you, we'll get through this. And people actually, they like it when you acknowledge a drama, when you don't become the drama, yeah. 
but you actually acknowledge that things haven't gone the way that they, they should have gone. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we kind of like that, you know, but if you look nervous, we look nervous, yeah. and then suddenly everyone's freaking out. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, H, H, Zah or Good Troy, man. what do you, you got? Are you writing this down because you, you keep coming back <laughs> well, to us? Well, can, can I just tell you that, yeah. um, you know, uh, listeners know I have a little bit of anal retentiveness going. Um, I'm not a big fan of acronyms. This one, G-S-O-H, is not pronounceable, but, geez, I wish it was G-O-S-H. But there's no know, way gosh, of making gosh it like be that. Better, huh? Gosh, should be unreal. No, I know. You can't do and, it. Though. Well, I'll tell you the H, but the, the H is real simple. It's have fun and get it done. I'll put it another way: if you have to get it done, why wouldn't you have more fun? Why wouldn't you make life more pleasurable for yourself and the people around you? You know, so many businesses talk about customer service, customer expectations, but they don't in any way focus on making it a great place to work simultaneously. You know, that's the secret, to take your job seriously and yourself lightly, to make it really fun during your day. And that could mean having fun breaks. And I know, you know, even we um, are guilty of not doing this when things get on top of us. But truthfully, you should be doing something active or fun or lighthearted, even if it's stupid. Even if I've got juggling balls sitting behind me, you know, my desk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm working on something and I think, you know what, I'm stuck, I just juggle. Or yep. I go, I'm walking around the block or I play an improvisation game with, with Troy, a creative game, or you reboot yourself. But if you're pushing on for longer than two or three hours on the one problem, yeah. um, you're doing yourself a disservice, yeah. you know, because you're not actually in your creative space. But, all to, you know, out of that acronym, mate, I really think the most important one is the G, which is good company. Because I think if you do that and you're good company for yourself mm. and you're good company for everyone you meet, you know, the person you pass on the street, the person you buy your Tic Tacs from, the person you live with, the person you're doing business with, not just the people that can serve you um, or you serve, I, I think that life becomes happier, you'll live longer, you'll be healthier mm. um, and it's there's a flow-on effect in the world, you know. People feel positive energy and go, geez, I don't know what it is about that guy but I like him. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That because uh, th then people excuse you for everything else, or not, you know, you've got there is greater leeway to be excused. I talk about it in marketing, where if you build a brand and a brand is an emotional attachment, uh, and if you build emotion between you and your client, um, and that can be done via humor, it can be done by a whole lot of things. Humor is just one of them, but mm. if there's emotion. People are there's a greater connection, and when there's a greater connection, it's harder for people to sever the tie. You know, it's yes, harder no. for people to 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 leave, to go to a competitor, to bar, to, to to negotiate on price. To Definitely, all Definitely. That In stuff. fact, it's been proven time and time again, Sam, that if you create that emotional connection, whether that is by humour or loyalty or however you go about that, I mean, Apple's a great example of this, mm. um, people will actually pay a premium. They'll pay more than what the market says because they feel attached to that brand. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's one um, that I could really recommend. I don't know whether you've seen it, Tim, the um, smart ad that's on at the moment with the dancing crosswalk. Have you seen that? Yeah. It's totally worth searching. I mean, I, I think yes. that's a great example of marketing, not not with comedy, but with a sense of humor. So it's a practical, applicable thing that we get very quickly um, watching that. Search for it. It's online. It's uh, called, I think it's called The Dancing Traffic Light. I'll and put, a, smart, um, I'll put a link to the YouTube video in the show notes to what is episode 207. Um, that uh, You know what? It's funny that because I didn't end up getting what it was for. I just thought it was really clever. It was almost like a, a clever piece of art. But uh, listeners, mm -hmm. people hopped in a booth uh, on the side of the road near some traffic lights. Uh, a camera was in the booth. It, uh, you started dancing and somehow the camera then translated your dance into the little guy on the don't walk sign of the traffic lights. Yeah, and they found that people were observing this and observing. going, wow, look, look, that's yeah. really interesting. But it was making them stop crossing the road illegally, which was the purpose uh -huh. of the thing. So it was also uh -huh. bringing a benefit to society, which is a good thing. A community announcement. Yeah, totally. Hey, and the other thing, I guess, from a marketing point of view, if you want somewhere safe and small to try out your sense of humor, why not do your 404 page on your website? 404 page is your error page. <laughs> if you Google those, there's a whole bunch of funny ones. Um, if you get an error on our website, it tells you to, uh, oops, something's gone wrong. Um, if it keeps happening, please let us know and we'll dispatch the IT donkey rapido. <laughs> so, you know, you can have a bit of fun with that. It's just a page that only people will ever see if something does go wrong on your website. 
website. It's a very safe way to do it. There's a million of them online that you can Google yeah, and steal, steal another one if you like it. What, what if people um, are listening and going, yeah, but I'm just not funny, and I don't mean me. They're talking to themselves. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> well, you know, like what, what do you do there? Well, I, again, it all comes back to the G. Just be good company. Yeah. If you put strangers together, I mean, how many times have you walked into, you know, a party, a cocktail event or, you know, some kind of networking event? Everyone's awkward at the start. Yeah, walking up to a group of people that you don't know is hard. Mm. But once we do it, once you kind of get the pleasantries out of the way, you know, mate, where are you from? And, oh, yeah, have you travelled here? Just listen for how quickly the first laugh arrives. Mm-hmm. Even in a group of relatively serious people, there will be a giggle, a connection, because we're searching for it as human beings. That's what's driving us. We want to form a real connection with another human being. That's that's what it's all about. Um, and we do that accidentally. You don't have to focus on being funny. You just have to focus on being good company and allow the humour to unravel in you. Yeah. It's in you. It's just waiting to be given permission to be explored. Be good company. I like that. Can I finish with a joke? Oh, I'd love you to, mate. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you could too. Maybe we could critique each other's delivery and, uh, and <laughs> level, level of funniness. I was trying to think, you know, because I often I think, gee, you know, what if someone's asked – Asked me to tell a joke. Often I don't have one in my back pocket. You know, it's like that. Oh, geez, I've got so many, but I've forgotten them all. But anyway, I was thinking about it because I knew you guys were coming on the show. So there's um, this uh, this old uh, pretty pretty much deaf guy and his wife go to the doctors because he's a bit crook. Uh, and the doctor goes, "Oh, yeah, we're going to have to do some tests. Um, we're going to need some samples um, of sperm, semen, and a stool." Uh, and the old bloke says, "What did you say, doc?" He says, I need some samples of sperm, semen, and, uh, and feces. And, and he goes, I can't hear. And his wife butts in. He says, he needs to borrow your pyjamas, love. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I didn't get that quite right, did I? You, no, it was good enough. We, we knew where we were, go- you, knew where we were going. going. Yeah, and it really just says a lot about you, I, I think. Know. The, the, the choice of joke that we um, decide to share with the world. Filthy. No, it's, it's, yeah, filthy. Filthy. Yeah, totally filthy. I think filth works. <laughs> It can work in the right company. With us, mate, any time. Yeah, well, there's no one else listening, so. No, that's right. You're You've pretty your... safe. What's yours? Yeah. <laughs> I only know one. I'm, I'm not really a, um, a <laughs> joke teller either. I'd say that. Well, I don't. Like in terms of a joke joke, because everything we do is you, you write it yourself and it's it's part of stories yeah, and yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. But the only joke I do know is about a, a lonely guy who goes to a pet shop and says, I'm looking for a pet. And the guy behind the counter says, look, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird, but... Um, this is a centipede and he's really talented. I think you'll find that he's, he's going to be able to help you around the house. And the guy goes, oh, I don't know. And he said, just take him home, just give him a go. If it's a problem, bring him back. So the guy buys the centipede and he um, takes him home and he says to the centipede, uh, all right, my, my lounge room is a mess. You know, you've got 30 minutes to vacuum it, clean it up, make sure there's nothing on the floor, the remotes are all, you know, where they're supposed to be. 30 minutes, your time starts now, go. And he comes back 30 minutes later and unbelievably, Timbo, this centipede has absolutely done the most remarkable job. So the, the lounge room is just sparkling. It's just perfection. And the guy grabs the centipede and takes him to the kitchen and says, well, your night's not over yet. Um, the kitchen's a bit of a disaster. You've got 15 minutes to do the dishes and make sure it's all, you know, I want to be able to eat off the floor. So he comes back 15 minutes later and, um, look, it's just it's unbelievable. Mm. You know, the, the centipede has done a better job than if you got a, a team of cleaners in there to, to make it extraordinary. And so the guy says, all right, one last thing, one last thing that you can turn in for the night. He says, um, I'm out of, I'm out of uh, some food, so I want you to go to the shops. So he says to the centipede, I need some milk, I need some juice, and I need some apples. Uh, you've only got 10 minutes. Your time starts now. Go. So um, 10 minutes goes by and uh, the, the centipede isn't back. Um, and the guy sort of waits and, and then 30 minutes goes by, still no centipede, 45 minutes, 60 minutes later, still no centipede. And finally the guy's getting, you know, worried and he goes to the door and he opens up the door and he looks down and there's the centipede uh, sitting on the doormat. And the guy goes, what are you doing? I told you to go to the shops. And the centipede looks up at him and says, give me a break. I'm still putting on my fucking shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Troy and Zara, Humor Australia. <laughs> Thanks for putting a smile on our dial. Thanks, Timbo. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Hey, 
What about that? Did you enjoy that interview as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you? Well, you'll never know because you don't know how much I enjoyed bringing it to you. Well, a lot. Now, uh, thanks to Net Registry and 99 Designs, I want to share my top three learnings from it. And then I want you to share your learning from it by going over to the show notes. More on that in a minute. Number one, your capability does not equate to how serious you can be. Oh, I love that. Zara was full of great quotes, wasn't she? But how often do you see people trying to prove how capable they are by being incredibly serious, okay? So observe yourself. If, if that's you, maybe just factor back the seriousness and inject a bit of humor. And as Zara says, you don't have to crack gags in order to be humorous. That takes a bit of pressure off her. Number two, want a good company? Then be a good company. Love that too. I like the idea that if we can establish rapport with the people we're doing business with, whether it be a prospect, an existing client, a supplier, the media, your staff, whoever it is, then I can't help but think everything else falls into place a lot easier. I know it's not that simple, but boy, oh boy, if you do establish rapport, then the idea of just life becoming a little bit easier, people giving you a little bit more leeway, I think you'll find that will happen. The top three, uh, third learning, uh, start to look for ways to inject humor into your business. I love, I love the idea of looking at all your marketing touch points and just every, like one, set yourself the challenge once a week, where can you inject some humor? It might be your voicemail. It might be your 404 error messages. I'll put, I'll put error pages. I'll put a link to some examples that Troy was talking about into the show notes of this episode. It might be your logo. There's a great book. I'm going to link to it in the show notes called A Smile in the Mind. And it is all about beautiful design that puts a smile in your mind, puts a smile on your face. Not always hilarious, but just a nice little kind of design trick each time that kind of yeah, lightens your day. Uh, or even your email signature. And I've got to refer to Troy and Zara's. They've got a couple of fun things in their email signature. They call themselves directors and then in brackets and communication shaman. Um, and next to their name, they have PhD, PhDs. Looks like PhD with an asterisk. And that stands for Pretty Humorous Dudes. So all along the way, they're finding opportunities to be funny. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Look for episode 208, not 207, as I said during the interview. Look for the show notes and leave a comment of one of the learnings you shared. Even better, join the forum because we talk about each episode inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. I do hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And don't forget, have a laugh. Well, team, that brings us to the end of episode 208 of Australia's number one marketing show. Now, here's the thing. You want to get your online footprint sorted? Head over to Net Registry. You want to get some brilliant design done? Car wraps, business cards, logos, brochures, book covers? Head over to 99designs.com forward slash SBBM. Now, next week's guest... Another interesting, interesting person. We are going to be tackling the issue of everyone being time poor. I'm not sure that is the case. I think sometimes it can be an excuse for not getting stuff done. My guest is going to show us how to find 30 hours a month extra that we didn't know we had. What about that? Anyway, enough. You're running out of time. There's work to be done. There's humor to be created. There's laughs to be enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. May your marketing be the best marketing. I've been Timbo Reid. See you later. You've been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show with Tim Reid. Want more marketing goodness? Then visit smallbusinessbigmarketing.com.